from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015, brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Hi, everybody, we're back. Welcome to HP Discover 2015. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Rick Hegberg is here. He is uh, with SanDisk. Right. We're going to talk the All Flash Data Center. Right. That's been a topic of discussion today. We had a customer on who, who wasn't too, you know, positive on it, and we had another one that said it's coming. Be here next year or two years. So uh, well, let's start with SanDisk. Uh, interesting company in the heart of this transformation into Flash. You guys making big investments there. Uh, you've done some interesting acquisitions. So give us the update on SanDisk. Well, I mean, you know, as you know, or may not know, uh, we're one of the innovators in the NAND technology. Between uh, our joint venture with Toshiba, we produce about 50% of the world's NAND bits. So a lot of people don't know that about SanDisk, but we are a large producer of NAND. As it relates to, uh, as you alluded to, our, our investment in the enterprise segment, we've spent over $2.1 billion in making uh, a, a series of investments to uh, build up a portfolio of solutions that we can offer to our customers like HP. Um, and uh, those are software acquisitions as well as hardware acquisitions. And most recently we acquired a company, Fusion IO, last summer, which is the largest of the acquisitions we made. So it's a, it's a big, big investment SanDisk is making to deliver enterprise solutions based on our NAND technology. Yeah, so, and of course everybody knows you for the sticks that you, you, know, right. you put into your laptops, but you much, you got a big enterprise play, uh, and as I say, some significant investments there. The Fusion I.O. acquisition was very interesting. How's that going? What, what, what's, can you give us an update on that? Well, the Fusion I.O. acquisition's been very good because it, bring, it brings unique technology and solutions that, uh, for example, our relationship with HP, we've got a very strong relationship with Fusion I.O. did. We're garnering that as well as Fusion IO has a very strong end user sales organization. So what we do with HP is we actually engage with our end user customers and help them design and uh, promote solutions. So it's not only the technology and the business we bought, but it's also frankly a lot of the selling engagements and the relationships that we've, uh, that we've had with that acquisition. And so it, it's been going along very well. And Fusion had a lot of software you know, in its portfolio. Right. Where does that fit with SanDisk? We have a, uh, within our, our enterprise business unit, we have a software team, and we sell a variety of different software offerings. These are primarily caching alternatives, so it, in a variety of servers, you will, you will cache your, your, your hot tier data, and that's effectively what Fusion had, as well as SanDisk had as well. And we're also, as part of the other acquisitions we had, we have other type of scale-out software solutions that we have for SAN, Cassandra, different types of workloads. So it's a big part of our offer is, is our software offering as well. We, um, we've been talking today about you know, the All Flash data center. I said we had a customer from Alcoa on, and he said, well, I'm not really sure. He's not really driving data reduction hard. Um, being careful about that. And another customer on, cloud service provider, going all in. So let's back up. You're further down the value chain, so you got, you're close to the <laughs> the silicon. Right. Um, let's talk cost. Let's let's start there. We're, we're talking raw storage cost today, coming out in an array of what three, four dollars a, a, a gigabyte. Is that about about right? I mean, you guys are well, a lot as less. You know, obviously, uh, at your with just HP announced uh, yesterday or this week, right? Which is their the new all flash array. They're now at with using a four terabyte drive. They're able able to now to get to one point five. And that's for usable space, right? And that's that's with data reduction, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so and it seems like flash prices. Not seems like is a fact. Flash prices are coming down faster than those of spinning spinning Correct. media. Right. And what's driving that? Well, it's again, it's solid state technology, right? The fundamental problem with uh, spinning disk, or we call it spinning rust, <laughs> is that it's uh, there's there's only so much you can do to re reduce the cost of that versus in a solid state drive, which is basic, it's based on semiconductor technology. We continue to drive down the cost, we put more bits per cell, we drive down the lithography, similar to what any semiconductor process is, and so we can continue to drive down the cost. As well as we're actually increasing the capacity 
into these particular drives. We've just announced a four terabyte drive that we're shipping. Right. And we'll be announcing an eight terabyte drive at some point here in the not too distant future. So we're going to add the capacity, but as well as the clusters are going to come down. And the other thing relative to these products at a, at a server storage level, it's also the total cost of acquisition or ownership because the power consumption of a storage array and or a server based on flash is significantly less than that of a hard drive. Well, and it goes beyond that when you start getting into data sharing and and the ability to spin up multiple copies and and performance you know, so it's another big aspect. Of you it. need less to service the same, you know, applications. But I want to go back to what you were saying about the spinning rust. We call it that too. Um, <laughs> the, but the, but but spinning disk has always benefited from Moore's law. I mean, it's always tracked sort of Moore's law, but it's begun to attenuate. Right. Is that because the investments aren't there in head technology anymore and uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not an expert on hard drives, uh, but I can tell you, we if you just look at where we're going with uh, our, our cost nodes of our technology. Um, You're on that track. We're on that track. We're yeah, on that and, Moore's and Law disk track. And is, is it's not that, there. It's slowing not at, down. It's not at the rate that we are. And so, so at what point what, At what point do you think the raw cost per bit crosses over? Will, will that? Well, right now we're seeing, and you, you've, heard it to, you've heard it this week at, with, at, here at HP, is you know, they're, we're displacing 15K hard drives in server and store applications. We're now displacing 10K hard drives. And I mean, that, that crossover point's happening now. And over the next couple of years, you know, frankly, our objective is we want to replace all that, all that spinning rust at 15 and 10K hard drives and, and, and using SSDs. And so, we think so, it's going to happen. So, you, so spinning disk gets depositioned or repositioned into the bit bucket, I guess, goes compete with tape. Right. Good luck on the cost side. That's going to be an interesting battle, especially when you start putting flash and tape together, because tape starts to get interesting performance metrics. But and so we're there. We, we basically we're there with uh, with 15k high spin speed right. disk drives. We're right. there, and you're saying 10k within what? Now. 10k now. We're doing it now. I mean, and you'll see. You'll see. You'll see companies like folks here that are going to be replaced 10K artists and in their services. So what's left? 7,200? 7,200. I mean, frankly, we're not, there, there will always be a, a place for hard drives, for archival data, this, that, and the other. But when you're talking about tiering data, high performance data, this is where you're going to want one. Well, but there's another, there's, a, there's another equation here, which is how long does it take to rebuild a, I don't know, 20 terabyte hard drive if, when we get there? What are we at today? What's the highest capacity hard drive you can get? Do you know? Well, you're four terabyte. Four hard drive? Yeah. Four yeah. terabyte. Yeah. Oh, I thought somebody announced something higher than that. But they may have. I, I know. I know. Because you're at four terabyte. We're right? at four terabyte. Yeah. I We're think starting that. We are now matching the capacity points of hard drives today. Okay. So how long does it take to rebuild a four terabyte flash drive? Well, I mean, it does. Right? That's the beauty of it. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. And, and how the long is it going to? Performance, the IOPS performance, everything else. But There's a tremendous amount of other attributes associated with that particular product, as well as the cost points are coming down. Yeah, and, and, fairly and, dramatic. And, and I, I, even even forgetting those for just a second, just to rebuild a 20 terabyte, 30 terabyte hard drive, because if you're tracking Moore's law, you're going to get there. It's going to take I don't know, a month, two months. So what do I do? I got to protect it. Now you got to do some things to protect Flash as well, but there's no time to rebuild right. the Flash drive. So it's it's an unfair fight. Now you bring in the, the 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 environmentals, this notion of data sharing, the fact that I don't need as much capacity to service the same. It's it's and the reliability. Talk about that because that was a, the knock early on in Flash. People used to say, well, if we had to pick a technology to put into the enterprise, we never would have picked Flash. Well, thank you, Steve Jobs, for getting the price down low enough that. The industry could do unnatural acts, and right. wear leveling, and all this other crazy stuff you do in software to make it reliable. Right. People warranty those things now. It's, it's as reliable as spinning disk, right? Is that more fair? reliable than spinning disk? More reliable. So well, talk because about you that. have less. It's a, no it's a non-mechanical. It's, it's a non-mechanical device. So by in theory, just that alone, irrespective of all the semiconductor processes associated with it, it's always going to be a more reliable product. As well as we talked about before, it's you know less. The, the, the power consumption alone is significantly less, and that alone is, drives up the reliability factor as well. So there's just tremendous amount of reasons why Flash makes sense in these in these particular products. So HP, uh, big customer, you got to be careful. I understand, but but 
Martin Fink in particular will talk about the machine, talk, they'll talk about Memristor uh, as, a, as a superior technology to Flash, but it strikes us that cost-wise, how do you compete right. with this? Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that seems like it's a long ways away before you can get the volumes out of whatever, some al alternative uh, to compete with, with Flash. Now, I know a lot of people out there, like Jean-Luc Chatelain's one, he watches the Cube, and you know, he's probably tweeting me now, going, no, you misunderstood <laughs> it. But, but it's just, I, the volumes are enormous. It's classic right. x86, right? Where the, the volumes are such that good enough becomes good enough uh, to catch those things. It becomes and the best. Exactly, and and then the so multi-formatted scale of which you, you can have so many advantages beyond just the unit cost, I think is really kind of the, the message that's come out today, Dave. So, so, well, so the other thing you got to remember now is that you know there is, there's SATA flash, there's SAS flash. Again, these are higher performance interfaces, so SAS now gives you now 12 gigabit input so that improves the performance. And as, as you know, we have a line of products called based on Fusion IO, which is PCI Express. Now we move that flash right on, right next to the CPU. We low latency applications, which is effectively moving all your hot tier data there. So we, we cover various different aspects of your storage requirements using flash. So yes. that's, that's the one key benefit that hard drives could never do, is they can't cover that level, you know, the, all those different multi-tiers of storage capability. So. Oh, I, I, want to, I want to talk about that. That's a very important point you just made. Um, but I want to go back to the, the notion of alternatives to Flash. You said off camera, yeah, we're looking at, we're looking at everything. Uh, but but <laughs> what's the boardroom conversation like with regard to those alternatives? Um, do you generally, I mean, everybody's paranoid, thank you, Andy Grove, but do you generally pretty confident that Flash is here to stay for a while? I mean, you got this thing has some Got some some legs, right? Major some, legs. Some runway. Major legs, absolutely. Yeah. It's not like you're panicking, saying, "Wow, we got to no, get out no, of this no, business no, no. and we got to I mean, shift at the, our." We're just at the inflection point, honestly. I mean, if you just look at PCs themselves, I mean, we're now at about a forty percent, fifty percent attach rate for SSDs in commercial notebooks, consumer notebooks. It's sub ten percent attach rate. So again, as these costs come down, you know, and everybody's putting everything in the cloud anyhow. Uh, I mean, we're going to see the attach rate in SSDs increase significantly in your in your corporate and consumer notebooks. And then, you know, obviously what you're seeing here today, uh, Flash is becoming the predominant storage media for cloud-based infrastructure as well as enterprise what, infrastructure. What the heck's going to happen to the hard drive, guys? Well, now, I guess, so WC, HGST buys Verident. Okay, so they got to play there, I guess, right? And Clayton so, Christensen. But, but he so used, he used drives what's, as what's Seagate study. doing? What is do you know? What's Seagate doing? Can you? Well, again, they they're looking at alternatives themselves. I would suspect, but you know, frankly, we that's the market we're going after. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm saying you right. it, it, you needed Seagate and other drive manufacturers in the fast to do all these unnatural acts that nobody else wanted to do. Fly heads lower, and you know, try to spin it faster, and increase track capacities, and you know, just things that you know, physics would say you can't do. But right. they did it, because yeah. they're really smart people. And then they'd sell them for like, less than your kid's PlayStation, way less, <laughs> right? With less margin, right. all right? Well, maybe maybe not less margin, I don't know. But, um, so, so yeah, well, you're going right after those guys right hard. Um, scary. Well, I mean, I mean, if you, you know, if you just look at a lot of these traditional old storage array products were based on hard drives, What's happening now? What's the biggest growth market today? He says all flash arrays. And the storage segment of that is the, is the biggest growth mar oppor opportunity. So I'm getting that's, the, that's going right after I'm, the hard drive. I'm getting the, the timeout sign, but I wanted to talk, come back to talk about something we call fame, flash as memory extension. So eliminating SCSI protocols, any disk protocol, and making flash as an extension of memory, a persistent extension of memory. That's something that Fusion I.O. really the first to sort of popularize that notion. A lot of software right. to do that. Super low latency, orders of magnitude lower latency than spinning a disk. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, again, certain things I can't comment on, but you know, uh, obviously we're, we're focused on high performance flash, which is right up what you just described, and we've got several things that we're developing to continue that momentum in that particular marketplace. So again, we're, we want to play in that 
that that hot tier of data yeah. as well as we're going to we'll, we'll compete in the low end of the archival data but that's very important to us well, as well and you're seeing others starting to talk about it now so EMC talks about um, DSSD they correct. made the acquisition there so that would be competitive to what 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 you do correct, correct. or okay it's an alternative then, way to get there it's a different form factor approach but it's fundamentally the same but similar same type of thing. value proposition right Right. IBM talks about CAPI. I don't know if that's an atomic right type of thing, but I think it sounds similar. Yep. Yep. But you're way, way ahead in terms of the software maturity. We are. We believe um, so, yes. And, and the contributions that you've made to the Linux Foundation in order to improve paging and things that people forgot about because they didn't need to right. for, for decades. So. Right. Interesting stuff yeah. to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for your time. Listen, yeah. thanks very much for coming to the yeah, Cube. Yeah, it was great. Great meeting and, uh, you. Thank you. Love to carry this on at some other time. So uh, it's it's really hot space, and uh, and we're excited about it. You can tell we're passionate about the future. And uh, yeah. so thank you. Appreciate it. Thank time. you. Appreciate it. All right. We'll be right back after this short break. This is the Cube from HP Discover 2015.